Hey drivers, just wanted to come on here for a couple of minutes before the start of this highlight video for the La Colina race and just, uh, there seems to be some confusion and I just wanted to clear it up before uh, we go any farther. I forget that some of you weren't around from the beginning of Formula Rock and don't know how we do things for some of the, some of the procedures we do. So I'm just going to explain it now so that uh, that will alleviate any confusion in the future, if you don't mind. Alright, from the beginning of the series, when DVD and I were first talking about it back in like November 2004, what I wanted to do for Formula Rock was a fixed series because I like racing against drivers, not their cool setups. That's no interest to me. So we wanted to do a fixed setup series. And the other thing that I, that I don't know how to do is build setups. I know nothing about setups. I never have. I've raced online for like seven years. And I've been racing Papyrus NASCAR sim since 1994 when the very first one came out. But I don't know a thing about building setups. Never have. Don't want to know, quite frankly. Don't care. I just want to hop in the car and race. And so that's what Formula Rock was basically set up as. It's a fixed series where every driver has to deal with whatever's out there on the racetrack. And I want the series to be a driver series. It's all about the driver, not the setup, not anything else. It's strictly the driver handling whatever's out there. Because I know nothing about setups, we have Camaro Guy 327, who's been associated with me for years. Um, he does setups for us when he can. But the thing about Camaro Guy is he's young, he's in a rock band, he's got a life, so he doesn't always have time to build setups as much. As, I mean, I, he's got like 14 tracks right now we'd like him to build setups for, four tracks that don't have a setup. But he only has so much time. So he does what he can, when he can, and when he gets them done, then we put those, those tracks on the schedule. But he only has so much time. So, the rule has always been in Formula Rock, when we find a track that we want to race on, I'll download it, put it in my game, and if there's a setup for the OWR cars, I'll go out and drive around for a few laps. If the setup feels like it's going to work, boom, that's the setup. That's it. I don't fool around. I don't test these tracks for very long. I'll, I'll run them four or five laps. If I think everybody can handle the setup and it'll work as a, as a race, that's it. It's done. So, I don't spend really any time looking at the setup. I, even if I looked at the setup, I wouldn't know what I was looking at. I hear guys going, well, these springs are wrong, and this isn't. If I looked at it, wouldn't know what it meant. So, the series is all about racing, not about whether the car is going to be perfect or not. Fundamentally, what I think is important is when a driver can deal with what's on the racetrack. That's what's interesting to me and that's what I want Formula Rock to be about. Now we try to make the setups as best as possible so that it, so the racing is the most fun and least dangerous. Which is another reason I like working with Camaro Guy because most of his setups are spot on and pretty good. Every now and then though he throws a, a monkey wrench in there just for something for drivers to deal with and I like that. I'm glad he does that. He doesn't do it very often but every now and then he'll throw one out there. Um, most of the setups we run, I think, have been excellent or, or close to excellent and, and very raceable. Every now and then, like uh, Nazareth last year, you, you, you get a race that's very difficult. The car is very loose, wants to spin out. I've said before, I think sometimes that makes it feel like we're in a, we're, we, can't, we can't simulate rain. We can't sim simulate new concrete or, or old asphalt. And when these setups are loose like that, I think it simulates rain or any, any of these other problems. A track that's breaking up and makes the track loose like everybody deals with in reality. So I don't sweat the setups very much. In fact, I don't sweat them at all. We, we find them, we test them. If it was close, we race. I think, from my standpoint, uh, I like to see drivers conquer or figure out how to deal with situations that are outside the norm. Like, I can't say how Snake Oil felt about winning at Carmen Park. I don't know what he thought, anything else. But from my standpoint, when the race started, he was fast, but he spun twice, dropped back, but by mid-distance had figured out how to run that setup and ended up running me down and winning the race. I don't know if he thought that was a, a pretty cool thing, but to me, when I can conquer a setup that's not perfect for me and win the race, that's a pretty special thing to me. And it's some, one of those races that I remember as being a very cool race. And that's kind of the thing that I like to do with Formula Rock. I, I, I raced in series where every setup is just perfect and, and it favors those guys that like the perfect setup. But the problem with that, from my point of view, is you see three or four guys win every race because those kinds of setups favor those kinds of drivers. I like throwing all sorts of different setups out there because that gives other people a chance to do well. And maybe that throws off the guys that like the really good setups. 
Last season in Formula Rock, season six, we ran 20 races. We had 10 different winners. I have no problem with that. I think that's awesome. That's what I want Formula Rock to be about. Anyway, we're not putting crappy setups out there to cause issues. We're doing the best we can. I don't know anything about setups. Like I said, I go out and test. If it works good enough, that's what we race. I like to see drivers solve a problem. You know, um, and that's just what it's going to be about. So hopefully you guys can understand that. If you don't like it, you know, I'm, I apologize and I'm sorry. But like I said, that's the best I can do. I don't build setups. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify why we do things the way we do. Hopefully I did. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I didn't write a script. I'm just talking off the cuff. That's how Formula Rock is. Anyway, here's the video. Welcome to La Colina for round number 19. We discovered after we got here that this track is actually haunted by the ghost of Evil Knievel. Wait a minute, Evil Knievel's not dead. Okay, the possessed by the evil of evil. I don't know. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Round number 19 at La Colina, a brand new track for Formula Rock on March 15, 2007. We had 14 drivers make the event. One guy did not, well, make the practice. One guy didn't make it for the actual roll-off. So 13 guys ready to go at the beautiful La Colina road course here in beautiful, I have no idea, maybe Brazil. Your pole sitter for this race is going to be number 17, Snake Oil, with a blistering 124.379 mile per hour lap. As we get ready to go, the pace car is off the track. The cars are ready to go. That's Mark B on the outside of the pole or front row. As the green comes out, and we are racing for, I believe it's 32 laps of exciting racing action. All right, you're on board with Lance Mofo Noop. The green is out. We're heading into the tricky S-Bend turn one and two section on the race course. That's Row Ooh, Row Ward goes by up the inside. As the racing gets going, you're looking at second running, number 58, Mark B. The race is about 200 yards old as we come up to this tight 180-degree left-hander. The cars are going to be looking at third running, a scoop of one then, Canuck and, oh we got a contact, oh we got something going on, let's take a look at that, the field comes up, looks like Canuck gets a little loose here, Randy R3 is underneath him, and we got a little contact, Canuck's going to go around, everybody avoids, except for Tucson 4 right there, Ugh. but no harm, no foul, well there is harm, Canuck drops all the way to back, nice burn spin though, that looked good, alright, well the racing continues, no yellow flag over that one, it's Lance Mofo Noop, Going, oh, it's the same corner. Last Mofo Noop goes a little wide into the grass, but he keeps it off the tire barrier. <laughs> RPM, on the other hand, up against the wall. Ah, I think he just taps it. Nobody gets damaged. Makes a couple passes in the process. Prez on the grass. All right, no yellow flag, as I said. Your leader now, number 17, Snake Oil. Getting it going as the race is about a half a lap old. Coming down the straight as we come, well, a number of straights into the fastest part of the racetrack, this high banked left-hander, which is a lot of fun to drive, actually, that's a cool corner. DBD running in fourth place, number 15 American flag ride on the racetrack through that high bank left-hander. A lot of fun on that particular part of the racetrack. And then as we come out of there, we're heading down into the trickiest section of the racetrack. You're on board with Randy R3 in sixth behind Row Warrior. These two big high berms in that S-Bend is going to be very difficult. It's like threading a needle. Interesting piece of racetrack. As Randy R3 gets a run on Row Warrior, moving into fifth place, coming down the hill as we get towards the end of a lap. And that final corner down at the bottom of the racetrack there as Dixie Dan running in seventh is going to show us the final slow and tricky left-hander second gear corner back out onto the front straight and we are finished with lap number one. Surprisingly towards the back of the field in the early stages, number nine, Prez, apparently just taking it easy, goes to the inside of Lance Mofonoop right there. It's a drag race down the straight. This is towards the back of the field. Good little battle at the back. Lance Mofonoop not letting go on the inside, but Prez is going to carry it. Well, no, Prez is going to back off and let Lance and RPM through. Prez, impressively patient at this racetrack. Hey. All right, then coming up the corner on the next lap, Canuck, this corner apparently doesn't like Canuck. It's going to get loose on him again. Oh, bam, hits the wall. But car doesn't appear to be damaged. He will cool little burn spin again, and he will keep going. We'll keep an eye on that corner and Canuck. Anyway, Tucson 4, three wins so far this season on the racetrack, running, you know, 8th or ninth as the field with Lance Mofo Noop and RPM side by side into that really fast left hand high bank corner lots of fun in that corner and everybody is racing which it would explain the race all right we're coming to that thread the needle chicane with those high berms on both sides 
Man, you make a mistake in there. That's the trickiest part of the racetrack, which is what makes the racetrack so much fun. Your leader, Snakewell, beginning to open up a bit of a gap there on Mark B and Scuba 1. We've never seen Smashem's car up close before, and that's what it looks like. It's the Harley-Davidson ride. He's racing side-by-side -side with Prez as we come down to clock off another lap. Good racing here. Smashem holding his own. Not too familiar with road courses yet. Oh, my gosh. It's the evil of of evil. Gets into DBD's car. He's trying to do a ramp-to-ramp -ramp jump. Eh, it wasn't very pretty, but he did survive it. Apparently, the evil of evil. Let's get on board with DBD and take a look at what that looks like. The evil of evil taking control of people's cars. It's its horrifying. Yeah, whatever. Prez finally, after a couple laps, dives to the inside of Smashem in that high bank left-hander, taking over the position in the early stages of the event. Okay, here's that corner and Canuck again. It's going to get a little loose again. Oh, saves it this time. Oh, well, let's cut to another video quick, or another clip quick. It's Prez racing with Dixie Dan. Dixie Dan's going to stay just a little bit wide and allow Prez to pick up another position Running a very patient race. It's all about the Prester. I don't know. Mark B. Whoa! Too much speed on the downhill. Clobbers that tire barrier. That allows Escuba 1, seen here, to take the lead in that final left-hander before the start finish straight. And Escuba 1, now your new second-place driver. We're looking at RPM. Goes a little wide here. Gets on the rumble strip, but still running well. Coming up the inside of Lance Mofo Noop. Just a tap to say hi, not a big deal. Let's take a look at that from on board with Canuck. RPM's diving down to the bottom. We got some smoke up ahead. Oh, a little contact. And Lance Mopo Noop goes around. DVD heading into that thread the needle chicane again. Oh, yeah, much, much better this time. <laughs> no altitude involved. And Randy R3 is running right behind him. This is a good battle up and down the field. But by this stage, we're on lap six. You're looking at Smash him, leading RPM, Canuck. Ooh. Whoa, this is an incredible pass. A little bit too much speed goes way out wide, but it doesn't pay off for him. Smash him stays in the gas and holds the position. Good little dice right there. Canuck involved as well. Coming through the turn one and two. Uh-oh, we got a car up on the rumble strip. Ooh, we have contact. Yellow flag is out. Let's take a look at that again. RPM, just a little bit too much speed. Gets over the rumble strip, nails the wall, loses it. Canuck can't avoid him. We got two cars into the fence. Canuck's gonna have engine problems. That brings out the one and only yellow of this event. As you can see, Canuck trying to make it back to the pits. The car will be dead, however. That will bring most of the field in for pit stop number one, led by Mark B. We got a drag race coming out of the pits. DVD, Randy, or three, getting out exactly the same time. Mark B getting a little work done. DVD wins the pit race. All right, then. Snake Oil stayed out, as did a scuba one and RPM. The green is about to come out. And there it is. We are back to racing. Snake Oil first, Escuba 1 second, RPM third. And we're racing, which would explain the high speeds. All right, like I said, RPM did not pit. He's in third spot. Surprising after the spin, decided to, uh, he didn't have enough damage to worry about. Apparently, you're looking at fourth running now. DBD coming up the inside of RPM with Randy R3 and Prez right there. Good little battle between friends, RPM and DBD. But a couple of seconds later, RPM feeling the pressure. Little too much speed off into the giggle weeds. Keeps, oh no, he doesn't keep it off the wall either. And that's gonna drop him right to the back of the field. What can I tell you? All right, your leader, Snake Oil, has a mirror full of Escuba One as we go through that tricky chicane. Smash him, copying Mark B. He's gonna slam that tire barrier on the way down the hill, but doesn't even lose a position. Lance Mofonuk will catch up a bunch, however. All right, the battle for third or second between Escuba 1 and DBD tightens up quite a bit. Good fight on the racetrack between those two guys as the battle between Randy R3 and Prez is heating up as well. Prez, in fact, is going to dive underneath Randy R3. Randy R3 wisely goes a little wide. Prez comes across the track. A little love tap there, but, you know, it's all fair in racing. Nobody gets... Uh-oh, the evil of... Evil Knievel comes back, gets a hold of Smashem's car. Another ramp-to-ramp -ramp jump. Smash him, tests his suspension, and he's okay. DVD, on the, in the meantime, catching up with a scoop of ones, trying to go around the outside. Probably isn't going to work out. Well, you wouldn't think it would work out, but yes, it does. DVD getting some great grip on the outside of the final corner and will take over second place from a scoop of one right there. Nice pass. All right, so the top five. There's your leader, Snake Oil, then DVD. Prez now up to third, Escuba 1 fourth, Randy R3 fifth, and Mark B, and they're running just that close, and for quite a while on the racetrack. Just behind Mark B, 53 Row Warrior, 
Just a couple of ticks behind those guys. Good battle up and down the field between the top seven drivers. All right, then Randy R3 trying to draw a bead on a scuba one. Although it doesn't look like it's paying off for him much. The scuba one getting down towards the end of his fuel run. Those guys in the top group did not pit, except for DVD, of course. And the, f well, I guess they're not pitting that time. RPM, however, ooh, into the tire barrier, and his car is pretty much done for the day, right about there. As his Dixie, oh, Dixie just slams that outer pit wall, or that outer crash wall. That eh, car doesn't look that bad. He continues on, feeling good. DBD, on the other hand, a little too, it's on the inside, a little too much on the outside, and yet holds on to it and keeps going. He's feeling the pressure from Prez. Smash him on the other hand, gets a little wide up on the berm. He's on two wheels. Oh, he rolls the thing. Ow. But the car, well, these are Formula Rock cars, people. They can handle some stress, and that car will continue. Perez surprisingly makes an unscheduled pit stop. He's trying some strategy here. We'll see how that works out. Meanwhile, the battle on the racetrack between Mark B and Randy are three. This, like, goes on most of the race between these two. Uh-oh, the evil of evil gets into DVD's car. It's another ramp to ramp jump. Well, one ramp jump. We got more evil of evil. This time he's in Dixie Dan's car. Yeah, it didn't get off the ground too much. That was just mostly a hurt to your pride more than anything else. Dixie Dan will continue on. Lance Mofo Noop is catching up. As Dixie Dan gets back up to speed, I'm not sure if Lance Mofanoop's going to pull off a pass or not, but I think he will right there. The evil of evil, which I don't know why I think that's funny, I just do, is apparently burning some of the drivers. Lance Mofanoop gets ahead of Dixie Dan, and there you go. All right, this is the battle for third spot of Scuba 1. It's time for his pit stop, so he's going to go wide, and that will allow Randy R3 up into third spot as a Scuba 1, of course, makes the all-important pit stop. All right, then we're looking to smash him off into the off into the weeds. Well, that would be sand, actually, and that's pretty much the end of his race, as he's learning about road courses. DVD, on the other hand, up on two wheels, saves it, gets up on the other grass, saves it again. All right, then DVD testing the limits of his car. Randy R3 then closes up on DVD, makes the pass. DVD's gonna bump Randy R3 in the back. And let's take a look at that again. Randy R3 makes the pass. DBD bumps Randy R3 in the back. He's a little wide. Oh, nails that wall and then clobbers the tire barrier. And that bends up the rear wing. And that's going to be a pit stop for DBD. The evil of evil causing trouble. There's DBD and Tucson 4 making a pit stop as well. Tucson 4 just doing a regular pit stop. DBD for damage. Your leader, Snake Oil, finally runs out of fuel. It's time for his pit stop. And that's going to relinquish the lead for the first time of this event. And the lead is going to be handed to number three, Randy R3, picking up those all-important bonus points as we're running down at the end of Season 7. Randy R3, your new leader, with Mark B right behind him. Perez now, out on the track, but running way back. He's doing some strategy runs here. Gets up underneath Lance Mofonoop. That moves him into ninth spot. Perez trying some pitch strategy. We'll see how that works out for him as the race continues. Meanwhile, behind him, we're looking at Row Warrior. He was on the racetrack. Going to go just a bit wide. Taps the fence, but it's okay. He's running in the top five at this point. Tucson 4 goes up underneath Lance Mofo Noop in that high bank left-hander. Continuing on with the battle. All right, Randy R3 has led three laps, but it's time for his second stop. He's on a two-stop strategy. Those top three guys in the after that first stop are on a one-stop. Randy R3 is into the pits for his second stop, and that will hand the lead over to this driver, number 58, Mark B, picking up the five bonus points. All right, Mark B, your new leader here at this race. All righty, then you're looking at DVD with a very bent up wing, but he's still continuing on and he's still bouncing off everything in sight. He's on two wheels again, he's up on the grass, taps that wall. Tell me that guy's not trying. Oh yes, he is. Row Warrior coming up on him. Not sure if he's gonna pull off the pass or not. Well, here it is again, DVD off in the sand. Oh, I don't think he's hit that wall yet. Well, of course now he has. All right, and that, of course, Row Warrior got by at that point. Sorry, it's not funny. Yeah, yeah, it really is funny. Okay, your leader, number 58, Mark B. It's time for his second stop. He's going to pull that thing into the pits. And there you go. And, of course, that's going to hand the leader back to the man who's been leading the race from the beginning. That's right. Number 17, Snake Oil, back out front, showing everybody how it's done as the race is getting towards the three-quarter mark. Back into second place by this point. Oh, well, here you go. Second, Mr. Scuba, one third. Mark B, fourth, Randy R3. Didn't know I was doing this. Fifth, Prez. Oh no, the evil of evil is striking again. He's on board with Mark B as the race is getting down towards the end. Mark B is going to do this 
huge jump. Oh, let's, oh, we have to take a look at that again. Marpy saves it, however. That's pretty impressive. But we are going to take a look at that once again, of course. How can we not? Marpy, the big altitude man of all time, almost lands on Randy R3. We're looking at this in slow motion. Just avoids Randy R3. Car fishtails a couple of times, and he saves it. He's going to lose the position to press, however, yet he stays into the gas. Coming off this corner, it's a dogfight for fourth place. And Mark B pushes his way through back into fourth place. So let's take a look at your top five. That was pretty exciting. Let's take a look at your top five. Bringing it home fifth, man of patience in this race. Number nine, Prez, pulls off a fifth place finish. Surviving uh, possession by the evil of evil can evil. Fourth is going to go to Mark B after the altitude of the race, or at least the most altitude. Bringing it home third place, this is going to almost sew up the championship for Season 7. All Randy R3 has to do is start the next race, but Randy R3 brings it home third, bagging second place in a very smart drive. Uh, in a setup he didn't really like that much, the Scuba 1 just held it together and brings it home second place. But the man on the track that no one could, could do anything with, number 17, Snake Oil, is going to bag his fourth victory of the season. He is winning a season in Formula Rock, four wins. Snake Oil, the man who had it all figured out at La Colina. So, as we watch the, res the final bits of this race from another angle, here's your race results. Next week, of course, it's the season finale, our seventh visit for the Indianapolis 500. But, after this race, we're still doing testing for uh, Season 8's Carnage Series. We went to another track that's on the Carnage Series schedule, Stunt Track, and we're just going to show you some highlights, <laughs> mostly wrecking, but highlights of the Stunt Track 10 lap event. And this would be it. Uh, it was lottery start, DVD on the pole with Canuck on the outside, DVD takes the green flag, and we're looking from our fabulous helicopter as we drive the incredibly difficult stunt track, which has tools like this, <laughs> woohoo, DVD, <laughs> into the air. Real worried doing a little wheelie, no big deal. Randy R3, one of the first cars to, oh, Dixie Dan in there as well, but Randy R3 will continue. RPM is going to find out that the stunt track is way off the ground, and he's going to fall off. The, whatever makes it high anyway. Cannot testing the, the durability of a Formula Rock car, guess what? Not that durable. He will continue in a bit. Hang on just a second, I'm getting a message from Camargo. Oh, Row Warrior, a massive accident. And that's about the end of Row Warrior's carnage test race. DVD going for altitude and sticks it. And he does it again. Ow. Fix it again. All right, then. The man who is patient, Mark B, is going to lead most of the race. Snake Oil is going to disappear off the track, and it's going to hurt. All right, then. And DBD finally is going to relinquish the lead, and this is going to take him out because that car is wasted. All right, Snake Oil will continue for a little bit, but that car is destroyed as well. All righty, then. Randy R3 testing the durability of his ride. Oh, that has to hurt. All right, late in the race, however, your leader of the whole event is going to wad that thing up, and he will go into the pits for several laps, which will allow the car who was at one point three laps down. Randy R3 is going to win the carnage race, which means nothing because this was just a test race anyway. So next week for testing, we will go to the hill climb at Daytona. Thanks for watching, guys. Good night.